So welcome guys with another reaction with a toxic channel. As as much as I said, as much Andrew Tate do interviews or podcasts, we're gonna react to them. I know a lot of you guys doesn't like him. Or when I do reaction, a lot of comments from you guys like that's stupid, this shit. And that. The guy, as much as you hated the guys, I know you're not hating on me. I know you're not hating on him. You just want to change your something in your life, but you couldn't change it because, you know, you're lazy. That's just the truth. So you have we, you have nothing against me or against this guy or against this guy. When you speak something, you, you say in the reflection that you're saying it's about you. That's the truth. Uh, and I will establish that, guys. So I will tell you why I do Andrew Tate because the guy is a genius. He's smart. He's a genius. He's a millionaire, so you never know when he gonna like. You never know. Like sometimes, sometimes he speak about uh, this kind of video, like this kind of video. He speak about the business or something like this or what to do, like just by mis not by mistake. He's saying it in his school in the real world. But in all cases, sometimes you follow this podcast, not just him and others, and you find some stuff like. They speak about it like business and stuff and ideas and you can just take it and try to apply it and if it's work for you it works for you so that's why i'm doing it as much as i can and i like to uh, to listen what he say anyway that's so before we check andrew Tate, guys make sure to check the stores as i say i'm dropping every day a new design i i told you this before in the earlier video you can check the store i'm going to drop the link in the description and also i'm going to drop the video right now yeah, so as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book, Couple Design, you can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day a new design. You see the, the f my favorite one. I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom, this one. And my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite. And this one is also nice, like as you, you can see the, the words, like yeah, we have a bunch of design, you may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us, guys. Just, it's not going to take much of you. You're going to choose just one of them, guys. May click on it, puff, and buy. That's that's the easy step. You choose, we have different color. You may you choose the color and you just click. We have different, as you can see, and different tie as your size, as you see, you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you and and um, yeah make sure to subscribe guys if you want if you want to the channel to grow up and in the future to give much more like to give gifts to the subscriber and to help the subscriber with with what with they need one day you never know this is life you never know how much you're going to go big so in the future I'm tr I will try to give it back to the subscriber and if you want if you want your reaction or your suggestion or send me the link with the super thing guys and the much higher your super thanks go I will uh, make sure to schedule it as fast as I can, especially that day or the other day. I will try to do it. So it depends. Oh, yeah. It depends on you guys. So let's just check it, guys. Let's just check it. And make sure to subscribe, guys. All of the ideologies which are being pushed by the Matrix are designed to destroy something. Andrew Tate goes on a massive attack to the crypto community. Uh, yeah, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. That's you. That's you? That's your personality? That's everything you are? He shares a story he's never told and a secret he's never shared. I know a killer when I see one. Me and him have a Mexican standoff in the back of the car. They set me up when I put my bag in the trunk at the beginning. He explains to you step by step how you can get rich. And he exposes feminism and defends himself against misogyny. Feminism is probably the most misogynistic movement on earth because what it does is it makes women into competitors with men in realms where they can't compete with men. Before I tell you the wild discussions we had, I'm giving away 30,000 pounds worth of exclusive prizes just for listening to both parts of this Andrew Tate launch. All you have to do is find the secret question. You see guys, you never know. In the future, with your help guys, of course, with the subscriber and how much we earn and how much we grow up. So in the future, we can get it back to the to the to the subscriber with gifts, with money. You never know, this is life. You never know. One day you're gonna need something. And you ask and 
You were gonna find it. You will never know. Help your brother here. And hidden in these two episodes. What goes around what comes around. Sexual consent. Try to help everybody. What he said? Sexual consent. You said fucking bring it. You told me to bring it. Well, it's forever changing, isn't it? I think if we're watching this, I think everyone at home knows what rape is. I think everyone at home knows what an actual rape is. Of course. And how heinous and disgusting that is. And I'm the first person as a masculine man to say We're all against it. it. I'll say it myself. A woman regretting consensual sex years later is not rape. I think that's cheapening the idea of rape. I think it's insulting to the women who have genuinely been raped. I think to sit and say that rape can now include a woman having a one night stand, demanding handbags, not getting handbags, being upset that she can't get handbags, still not calling the police, seeing that man buy another woman a handbag a year and a half later and then deciding it was rape. I think that is extremely insulting to the unfortunate women who have suffered genuine sex harassment. And it's disgusting. I also think that most women and most men know what sexual consent is. I have daughters. I have a lot of daughters and sons, but I want to make something clear because one of the things that's used against me most often is people say, I said women bear some responsibility for getting raped, which is not what I said. What I said is that we're adults and we must all bear responsibility for the situations we find ourselves in. If a woman is walking her dog in the park and is raped, that's disgusting and that's not her fault. What I was talking about was a particular scenario in which a woman will go out with a man, get drunk with a man, spend all night with a man, go to the man's house, continue to drink, have sex with the man, then, years later, decide that it was rape. My argument would be, if you don't want to have sex with a man, do not get drunk with him and do not go lay in his bed. That's my argument. I have daughters, and I would say, do not get drunk with men and lay in their bed if you don't want to have sex with them, ever. Don't do that, because you're going to give the man the impression. Now, I'm not saying the man can rape her. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you're putting yourself in a position where rape is more likely to happen. If I decide to walk through the worst area of town with a million dollars in cash, gonna be, gonna yeah, be nobody stupid. should rob me. You're, You're right. Rob. It's a crime to rob me. But am I making myself a robbery target? Am I making myself easy to rob? It would be irresponsible for me to do such a thing. So I think that the best way to protect women in these scenarios is not to do what the feminists are doing, which is to come along and try and create this ideal world. Well, men should know not to rape. We do. We know not to rape. We also know not to kill. And women should know not to lie. But guess what? People are imperfect and people do bad things. So the what you devil have to do is, is take real. personal responsibility and protect yourself against the possibility of these things. I think that the reason sexual consent has now become such a hot topic is, yes, there's bad actors doing bad things, of course, men and women. But truthfully, I think a lot of this is happening because we've removed some of the basic societal norms. Moral. A woman wouldn't get drunk with a man and go to a man's house and lay in the man's bed and kiss the man and take all her clothes off and then not want to sleep with a man 40 years ago. So the consent line wasn't as blurred because it was, you're not my husband or you're not my boyfriend, I don't want to go anywhere near you. It was a pretty clear line. So then the line had to be jumped over by a predator. But now the line's all messy because of the immorality of people, male and female. So now it's very difficult. Where do you draw the line? What if she gives consent, but she was drunk? That doesn't count. How is the man supposed to know? Is he supposed to get out a blood alcohol measure and, and make her beep beep? Oh, sorry, your yes doesn't count. The whole line's messed up because morality is destroyed. If you destroy morality, then now there can't be a line. So I can't answer the question. Nobody can. And the law is coming along trying to find the line in all these individual cases, in these huge court cases, trying to find the line where there's no morality at all. I would argue, and I know this is difficult to say, but I'm going to say it. If my daughter came to me and said I was raped, before, on my way to get my gun, I'd say, tell me the story. And if she said, I met a man and I was dating him for many weeks and I went out with him and I started drinking with him and then I went to his house and we continued to drink and it was a party and then we started kissing and I took all my clothes off and then we started having sex and then, uh, and then I decided that I, I didn't want to have sex anymore. I'm like, I can't truthfully shoot this man in the head anymore. 
Why did you do all of that? Why didn't you just say no? And I'm talking about my own daughter here. I, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say this without the world having a mental breakdown because we live in a world now where nothing is nuanced. You can't make a nuanced point. You can't talk about how uh, complicated a subject is. Everyone wants black and white. It's difficult what sexual consent is anymore because when you remove morality, there's no longer a line. I, I don't know. It's yeah, as he, uh, as he said, guys, is like I'm, I'm going to speak about I'm going to speak to, uh, about my side of uh, being a Muslim. It's like um, being uh, being a Muslim and fearful of Allah, and you follow the morality and the rules that Allah established, especially in uh, in Islam. He, he established it in every religion. If uh, and it doesn't matter which religion you are, Christian, Muslim, Jew, it doesn't matter. He established all the rules. The same rules apply to all religion. There is nothing changed. Just you have to understand the, the the devil also exists as he preached many times he said that i saw evil and that's why i may i became a religious guy and yeah the, the devil exists and you have to understand that he 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 gonna he gonna try to deceive us for the eternity till the the day of judgment that's what he gonna do the devil is this his job that's his job what he gonna do he gonna try to deceive you and he he will try to keep you he will try to keep you in a place that when you where you're gonna be his like his favorite by doing a lot of evil things no matter what you're gonna do no matter what you're gonna do the moment you have to understand you will not see this kind of things and you will not see this kind of things especially evil things the moment you're gonna start seeing the evil thing is then when you're gonna start doing some good things like when you start going through for example going to allah going to the direction of good to allah praying stopping alcohol going to the gym doing sports have going to work you will not have time for the other now then you will see the real evil how he's gonna try to attract you back again now if you are doing this kind of things he already like ah whatever you know but when once you start want to stop them then things are going to change but what i'm saying in his point of view i said like this kind of things is i would say in my like in my opinion like just um yeah be religious and be fearful of allah and uh, just get married guys get married you will not have this kind of uh, things like just get married find a woman get married have kids work your uh, stuff like this and try to have a really good woman behind you especially or beside you it doesn't matter it's not important in all cases, try to have a woman beside you guys. She she gonna be really support and try to find a religious woman. You know because the religious women are faithful of God, and they will and and, and they are controlling themselves all the time because they are faithful of Allah. And in the same time, she control you in the same time also. You know, whatever you are gonna do something like like this or like this, you are in front of her eyes. Wherever she's gonna do something like this, like she's in front of your eyes, and you help each other and you support each other. So get married, guys. These kind of things, and you will, uh, and you, and and you will deviate from all these kind of things. Like, whose future gonna come to you? You never know. Just get married, have kids, and move on. Try to be with one woman, not just playing around. Uh, if you're playing around, of course you're gonna have kids here, kids here, and the kids here, and the wife here, baby mama here. This child to support and this ask for money and this ask for money. So how are you gonna do? And then you say life is so much stuff, bro. You let yours everywhere. Come on. It's hard. This is why I've settled down with my eleven wives. Because you you can't trust anyone. Let's okay. imagine I meet a brand new girl. Let's imagine we have a happy relationship. Let's imagine we're together for nine months. And let's imagine we have sex a hundred times. And let's imagine I don't buy her a BMW. <laughs> Let's imagine. <laughs> and let's imagine she texts me and says, I want a BMW. And I say no. And let's imagine she texts me and says, if you don't buy me a BMW, I will go to the police and say you raped me. Let's imagine she admits. Was she from Peterborough, where I live? Well, <laughs> let's imagine she admits via text to the crime. She admits what she's going to do for a car. And I still refuse to buy her a car. When she goes to the police and makes that complaint, I will still be arrested. I will still be demonized in the media. I will still have to go to court. I will still have to go through a trial. 
I will still spend $3 million in legal fees, despite her admitting to the fact she is lying for a car. I will still have my reputation decimated. My life will be damaged. I'll be stressed to the max. I'll have legal fees. I'll go through all of this, all because I didn't buy her a car, despite her admitting the crime, because I'm a man. And even worse, I'm a famous man. And even worse than that, I'm a masculine man. So I'm the enemy of the Matrix. So how can a man even fairly and safely have a relationship anymore? Where is sexual consent? I don't know. I had sex with her 100 times. Was she drunk one of those times? I don't think so. Do I alcohol breath test her every single time? No. She's now saying she was drunk. I'm saying, well, she came over my house at 11.30 p.m. We went straight to bed. I don't know. I didn't know this. I don't drink. I haven't drunk a drop of alcohol in a year and a half. Yeah, but she was drunk. Prove it. Do you have the blood alcohol test that she was drunk? No, neither do I. But she says she was drunk. So she says the consent isn't real, so you still have to go to a trial. But she admitted she lied for a BMW trial. We have, we have evidence to the contrary because you said on the Rob Morris podcast that women can't park. And that, that, that BBC, rapist, 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 rapist. Bro, what the? You can't live a life anymore. And the scenario I've just described to you is 100% accurate. So how are you as a man now? You asked me what sexual consent is. I don't know. There is no sexual consent anymore. Let me, let me change my answer. My answer was there's no longer a clear line of sexual consent because of diluted morality. I'm going to change the answer. As a man, there is never consent. Because if it can be snatched from you retrospectively, then you never had it. You never owned it. If I give you something and I can snatch it back off of you at any time, do you own it? No, you're borrowing it. You can borrow consent as long as you never annoy that female at any point in the future ever. Good luck. That's what a line of sexual consent is for a man. So as a man in the Western world, you have zero consent. And even if you have all of the proof, I made the point about the text for the BMW because that's very important. You can have CCTV footage. You can have all her text. You can have everything. They will still destroy you in the media. So it doesn't matter. Your reputation is still tarnished. You'll lose your job, you lose your bank accounts. They'll still, take, they'll still take everything from you. So there is no sexual consent anymore for a man in the West. It doesn't exist. So here's a paradox I've just picked up out of that. Sure. And that is everything you said about what the media will do to you has made you bigger than Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. <laughs> like you are bigger than Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, it's made me massively. It has made me. Because if it didn't work like that, you wouldn't be as big as you are. Correct. But I'll also argue I'm in a fortunate situation because 99% of men who was hit like I was hit couldn't have done what I've done. And I'll tell you why. Firstly, there's the mental aspect. Every man thinks he's tough till it's going on. Two, when you have the BBC attacking you, attacking your mother, attacking your family, attacking the mothers of your children, when your kids are getting kicked out of school, when reporters are following your old mother around, when they've closed all your bank accounts down, when they're trying their very best to call all your ex-girlfriends and build up cases that don't exist, when they're printing lies about you, when you know you can go to jail at any moment for nothing. That's a lot of mental stress. Most, most people, I'd argue, couldn't deal with that mental stress. Next, financially. Most people have a job, and your job is gone, and you're broke. If you have your own business, you can't get customers or clients, most people. I'm in a very fortunate financial situation where my finances are hard to touch and very difficult to damage. In fact, they've been trying for a very long time to take down my schools, the war room. That's not even my main money. My main money is other things they don't even know about. I can't be damaged. I'm actually in the NBA. I'm an NBA player. I've never broken down. So because of that, I'm also fortunate. And I'm a very good speaker with a very large platform. And they've tried to cancel me and ban me, which they've done. Normally, that makes someone go away. They've tried, and I don't go away. I'm on other platforms so I can speak. If I was a normal person and I got hit with that garbage, I wouldn't be bigger than Jesus Christ. I'd be destroyed. I'd have no money. I'd have no job. I'd be able to get no customers. I'd have no social media. I wouldn't be able to tell my version of the truth, and they'd be printing lies about me endlessly. And my, add all that on top of the other mental pressure, I'd be suicidal. And they wouldn't care. They'd think it was funny. 99% of men who if they've gone through what I've gone through would be a mess. So I pulled it off, it's true. But I speak to all the men out there at home telling you you have no consent. Because if it happens to the average man, he's done. He is done. It happens to footballers. 
They're mm -hmm. famous. That's true. And they lose their contracts. Yeah, that's true. Right? Like, I, I said it in all my videos, especially when I do videos and stuff like this. Especially, it happened too much to football player because I was a. I, I'm, I'm still a fan of football and I, I play football. I follow football. I was I, I growing up around football. So when I grew up, I started understanding like, where, is, where are these players going? Like, for example, what happened to Benzema? What happened to Benjamin Mandy? What happened to this? What happened to this? Even Cristiano, they tried to put him with this kind of things. But Cristiano, nah, come on. It wasn't that. Anyway, they tried, though. Really, yeah? They lose everything. It's crazy. There's no such thing as sexual consent in the West for a man anymore. I didn't even realize that until you asked me that question. I thought it was blurred because of morality. But after analyzing it, it turns out it doesn't exist at all, which is even worse. There's no such thing as sexual consent. As a man, how are you supposed to live your life? I guess you just don't talk to women at all. I guess you just don't reproduce, right? If you have no kids, you have nothing to live for. You just sit there and play video games. Be a, be a good slave. Pay your taxes. That's it. I guess that's what they want. And then they wonder why the birth rate's declined. And wonder why they have to import all these third worlders because no one has kids anymore. Well, how can you have kids if you can't have a wife? How can you have kids if you can't have sex? We're, everyone in this room and everyone watching this podcast exists because a man went up to a woman, said hello, and they had sex. That's what happened. Now if you even go up to a woman, you're a sexual predator. If you go up and say, excuse me, I think you're beautiful. That's somehow. That's, that's why we're all here. <laughs> the level of matrix attack. Do people understand what's going on here? Society is so fundamentally broken. You can't even exist as a man anymore. Your only hope, the only answer, is to be such a charming, fantastic individual that women do not want to betray you and attack you. Which I guess is an answer. I mean, it's worked for me. But you're relying on the sensibilities of other people. It's kind of a scary scenario to know that the woman you take care of and love might turn on you any moment. And she can. And she has all the benefit of the doubt. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just going to say it. In fact, it must be true. If a woman goes into a police station and makes an accusation against a man with no evidence, no evidence. Six years ago, I had sex with a man. Who? Him. I have no text messages from him. I have no video of it happening. I have no video of me going to his house. I don't remember where he lives. I don't remember the car I was in. I don't remember anything. I was drunk. But I had sex with this man, and I regret it. He raped me. Zero evidence of any kind. That man would be questioned and arrested. If I go into a police station and say, I was robbed, I don't remember where, I don't know what they took, I don't know when it happened, but I was robbed. They go, what do you want me to do with this? What do you mean, robbed by who, what, what? There's no, no evidence, just, just random accusations. It's scary. Then, let's go deeper down the rabbit hole. Do women hate men now? I don't think so. If you're going to push this feminist narrative and you're going to tell women they have to compete with men and a woman's going to buy into that and she's going to see herself in competition with men inside the workforce or inside society in masculine realms, is she going to feel hateful or resentful towards men to a degree? I'd argue she would because a woman in a feminine realm will destroy a man as she should. She has all the advantages. And I'll sit here and say that women in feminine realms outperform men 100% of the time. By extension, in masculine realms, men will outperform women 100% of the time. So if you're going to try and turn women into men, what you're going to have is you're going to have short, broke, emotional men who are going to lose to big, strong, tall, stoic men. And then they're going to be resentful of the men who do better than them. And then you're going to give that resentful person power to destroy any man's life at a whim without evidence. I'm just talking out loud. I don't know. Is that scary? Well, I would like to. I would like to jump on this one. Is like um, this. I, I I will say it again. And he's saying the same thing in whole in all his video. They ask him the same question. No one asks him a new question. I don't know. It's to be honest with you guys. It's becoming a little bit boring because the same question, same answer, just different answer, but about the same question, same meaning. I would say like uh, the people hate him because he have the different deliveries. Some people doesn't like the, the delivery that he goes with because he can deliver nicely, but he choose this way. It's his choice. He can deliver it though nicely. 
but in all cases like the same question same answer I, I would like when he say here about the crypto community and how to get rich so i'm just waiting how he gonna speak about this and about this kind of topic as uh, doesn't it's not really important for me right now so i'm gonna just keep it going and when it comes to real topics we're gonna speak about it and we're gonna discuss it it is kind of scary and then you come along and say okay well we've tried to turn these women into men and they're not doing that well so we're going to do diversity hires and hire the women over the men, even though the men outperform them. And if you look at her wrong, she can destroy your life at random. And you have to pay all your taxes, go build the roads. And you're not allowed an opinion. And if they're fat, you have to find them attractive. Otherwise, you're a misogynist. Yeah, I would like, I would like, I will just say quick words on this one. We don't have this problem in Africa, especially in Algeria. We don't have this kind of problem, especially in my home country. This problem is... For, for I believe this problem is in the USA and in the West. But if I make sure, if I would like to speak the truth, Eastern Europe and Africa, the Middle East, still uh, maybe Asia, Asia also, Asia still the same, except the West and the USA, there are things changing there. Except in that, this problem is not <laughs> accurate in other parts of the world. And your kids are gay. Don't say anything bad. <laughs> freedom democracy <laughs> don't you love we live in a free society isn't it great freedom it's money but money matrix money matrix yeah. free society we live in a free society it's so free here i feel free do you <laughs> let's go deeper down the rabbit hole talk about money matrix it just reminded me of something how do most tech companies make money today? They give away a free product and they use your personal information. You are the product. You are the product, that's right. So you use Facebook or use Instagram, you use a free product and they get personal information about you and your habits. And, that's, and they take that information and they monetize it. So the logical extension of that fact would be that the more information they obtain about you, the better they will be at monetizing that information. So that means that large companies are trying their very best to know everything about you. The harder they survey you, the better their surveillance, the more profitable they will be, and companies' primary objective is to be as profitable as possible, meaning that tech companies and large companies, by extension, which are basically government, because government have their fingers in all of them, want to spy on you as much as possible. The reason they want to do that is to build a pattern of your behavior and they use that pattern of your behavior to predict i have just to speak about this because it came up to my mind is it true or no it happened to you before or no i don't know but i would like if you go to it and please explain to me if it happened to you before or no i will usually when i want to buy something and i start speaking for example with my, with my wife or with my cousin about that something and then Later on, I'm just scrolling, scrolling, and then I find the ad about what I wanted, what I was speaking about. And that's a little bit cringy. I don't know if it's happened to you before or no, but it happened to me before. Like, I speak about something and then it just pop up in my screen. Like, what the fuck? I was just speaking about this shit. <laughs> so I don't know. It happened to you, please, in the comment. Comment, guy. Predict how you're going to spend money. Or predict how they can make you spend money. If we show him this type of advert at this time, for this length of time, he's more likely to spend than if we don't because of all the other millions of people who fit his profile, this was the most reactive type of advertisement. If you accept all of that to be true, then you must accept the next logical extension to that, which means if they have all this information on your patterns and how they can make money from you, they must be trying to change your patterns. They must have pattern A type of person who is worth $11.59 and pattern B type of person who is worth $9.22. How do we make the pattern B people act like the pattern A people? What do they do different? How can we change the algorithm or the app to make the pattern Bs be more like the pattern As so we can make more money? If the goal of a business is forever profit, they want to forever survey and they want an ideal customer. And if they understand your patterns of behavior, they must be trying to influence your patterns of behavior. The next logical extension to that is, we're living in a world where not only are we being spied on with absolutely everything, every single thing we use is trying to change us and change how we think and change how we act. 
Could we argue that's how you make your hundreds of millions? Change your people against the matrix to the free. One hundred percent. So you have me, who is particularly eloquent and concise. <laughs> concise is one that you are not. Compendious. I'm good at talking, but now we have machines do it. So we're talking about the future and AI. People say, what do you think about AI? I think AI is going to change how we all think and act. I'm not worried about what the machines are going to do. I'm worried about what you're going to do. You as a person. I'm worried about what the people are going to do when the AI becomes good enough to truly turn the pattern Bs into the pattern As. How do we make all the people who understand the truth believe Andrew's a human trafficker? How do we make people believe the news again? What disaster do we need to, have, need to come up with? What words do we need to type in which order? In which order do we have to show them the different articles for it to be a logical continuation in their brain for them to come to the conclusion we want them to come to? I'm not worried about what AI is going to do on its own. I'm worried about what it's going to do to all of us. Because that's how they're making money now, is by surveying us and controlling us. And yeah, I'm one man with a mouth, and I'm pretty good. But to compete against machines into the future, I'm only going to lose. So when you talk about money matrix, it, it just reminded me about how Surveillance capitalism. I guess that's the only capitalism we have now, is surveillance capitalism. I guess I would, I would like to, and I'm doing this on the fly, so I don't know, but what is communism? Communism is, is spying on absolutely everything somebody does to make sure they adhere to the correct creeds so they can make a living. Surveillance capitalism is spying on absolutely everything somebody does so you can make as much money as possible from them, but if they don't do the right things, you delete their ability to exist as a human. I'm sure somebody with a little bit more time than I could draw up the comparisons between surveillance capitalism and communism. Are we kind of reaching the same place? Well, You're we, spied on, absolutely. We don't even have capitalism anymore in the true definition of the word. Where do we? Well, I, Where do we have free, fair markets and free competitive forces? That's right. And. If a government's primary objective every single day is to get more and more control, which is all it is, it all ends in communism anyway. Is surveillance capitalism just another path towards the same thing? Every day, the government passes new laws. Every week, every month, whatever. Have you ever seen the government take a law away? So over time, they just get more and more and more and more control. They don't take laws away. They just add new ones on top. Where does that end? If you have 100 marbles and I take one away every day, it ends at zero. It doesn't matter if it takes a while, but that's where we end up, right? So the governments are all going to try and end up with us in some form of slavery. You can call it communism. You can call it something else. But this money matrix, you're talking about surveillance capitalism. I don't think that's far off communism anyway. I don't think anybody, you're right. We have no free and fair markets. We have no freedom of speech. We just talked about the freedom of society and how garbage that is. Democracy is a scam. That's a lie because they influence and control the media if the, if the voting machines work. So what do we have besides God? Only God can save us now, my friend. You better start praying. That's what I said from the beginning, guys. It's just um, it, uh, society, we shouldn't work on uh, how society is. We should work on our morals and the rules of Allah. And that's they are the most fair to the human beings. Because if we would like to follow uh, rules, it's better to follow the rules of what Allah put already on us because that's where the moral come. They come from the holy books. And that's how we understand how to go and what to do and what should not should to do. And if we follow it 100%, we're not, we, we're not going to see much evil like we see these days. Because <laughs> we ain't got anything else. There's nothing else to believe in. What else are you going to believe in? It's, it's scary. Also interesting you say about the money matrix. The average person stands so little chance of being financially free. It is ridiculous how screwed most people are. They don't even know how screwed they are. You know, let me tell you something that's really hilarious. This mainly made me laugh out loud. I don't have Facebook because I'm banned. But I saw a Facebook post. My mom shared it with me. Someone, someone. And it was a 17-year-old who was happy that they got accepted into college. That's, That's good. the biggest joke I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. So wait, you are happy you've been accepted to give them money. Imagine I said I was accepted to buy a Big Mac. 
I'm trying to give them money. Are you accept me? Oh, thanks. So you can go to school and learn nothing. Learn nothing. You know what I What you mean by uh, get accepted in university and pay them money? You get accepted. You, you pass the baccalaureate. You, you finish with the high school. You, 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 you're going to get a bunch of universities that going to see you're going to subscribe to them. You subscribe to one of them and you just go study. What you mean you need to pay them to study? doesn't work like this i don't i I don't i don't know about the west or about the usa but in in algeria we don't study with money it's free education so i don't don't know this this is new to me so you can go to school and learn nothing learn nothing you know what i love to do with people who go to uni i love it because i don't have a degree right and i'm obviously monumentally more successful than all these nerds and every once in a while i meet somebody whose whole identity is invested in their they're learning. And they talk to me about how important it is. Blah, blah, blah. If you want to be a doctor, or a, 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 I don't want to have to point out the obvious here. If you want to be a doctor, you go to school. I get it. Okay, cool. But whenever someone's in uni, I'm like, why do you go to uni? They go, oh, because I want to learn things. So did you go to uni today? Yeah. What did you learn today? What do you mean? No, today. Today. Here we, he said that the jobs like lawyer, because the lawyer who get him out of jail, so he cannot be a hypocrite when speaking about them. So he said, like the doctors and stuff like this, and we're not speaking about them, we're speaking about other things. Like, I don't know, we're speaking about, we're going to see what he's going to speak about, but he's not speaking about the famous jobs that, like doctors, lawyers, stuff like this. What did you learn today? They can never answer the question, it's great. Ask them. So I ask people, what did you learn today? And watch them just fumble. And then they realize, well, I didn't learn anything on one day. I probably didn't learn anything on the week. I probably didn't learn anything the whole time. All things for this scale, all waste of time. Then you get in massive monumental debt. Debt, that's the money matrix. You come out of school, you're in, you're in debt. It's over. It's over for you. You're never going to make it. You've lost the game on level one. You're lost. It's kind of interesting that I had a thought experiment with somebody, and I said, you can only get loans for school, because if you could get loans for anything you wanted, nobody would choose school. Because they can't exist in a free and fair market. They have to keep a monopoly over the ability to enslave children with debt. Otherwise, no one will choose them, because there's no value in it, and everyone knows there's no value in it. But how matrix-minded do you have to be to actually still be happy about the idea that you got accepted to a college? I, I, was, I, I nearly laughed. I said, these people have no idea Mm. They don't have a clue. Rich get richer. I'm sure you understand. Mm. Poor get poorer. Inflation, inflation, inflation. That sounds like higher house prices to me. Good thing Good I own the a rich. Good thing I own a bunch. Yeah. Sounds like higher share prices. Good thing I own a bunch of that. Oh, you can't buy groceries. I'm sure that's very hard. We don't have to worry about those things. We own all the assets. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. There's no way to stop it. And I also feel like it's all because, because of interest and shit. We need God, and we talked about how messed up society is. I also feel like we're living in the last years where there's a, a hole in the matrix, where there's any degree of social mobility. I think we're going to end up back at feudalism. There's going to be kings. See at the top, my friend. <laughs> how many Ferraris? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> diamond watch, arguing about our diamond watches. There'll be us, and there'll be everyone else. Right now, there's still a degree of social mobility where if you're intelligent and you're perspicacious and you're indefe- indefatigable and you work hard and you manage to find a-, a gap and you really dedicate yourself and you try your best, you can make enough money to get out. In 20 years, the rich are going to be rich and the poor are going to be poor and it's done. It is done. Because the average price of a house is going to just continue to skyrocket. The wages are not going to follow it. You're never going to own any assets. The assets are going to be owned by all the rich people. You're going to be paying us rent. It's over. And this is another thing I find in- interesting because people come to me often question I get asked most is, Andrew, I lack motivation. You have 10 years left to save your bloodline from eternal slavery, and you lack motivation? (laughs) You are born to lose, sir. You are a loser. All of your ancestors who fought saber-toothed tigers should have just laid down and died because they fought their best for you to be born so you can jack off to Pornhub during the last few years where you stand a chance to save your last name from eternal serfdom. You are a dickhead, and you deserve to be poor. The last thing you should lack in the mess of the world today is motivation, because you are running out of time. And I'm telling you as a rich man who made it out, 
I can see the gap is closing. I can see it. So you should certainly see it. I'm above in the clouds, looking down on the hole closing in. You're down below looking up, watching it close, and you lack motivation to build a ladder. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> maybe government will save me. Maybe if I vote for the liberals, they'll give me money. <laughs> Slave minds, clowns, fools. The last thing you should lack in the world today is motivation because truly people are running out of time. And I find that extremely interesting that not only when you go to college do you end up in a bunch of debt, not only do you end up owing a bunch of money, even worse, you waste time. You waste years for a dream. And the Matrix is very good at this. It, ha it dangles a carrot all the time. Get good GCSEs. Get good in college. Get a good degree, then you'll be rich. Pay off your mortgage, you'll be rich. Just pay off your student loans. Don't worry, just keep working. The carrot's coming. You'll get it one day. When I was 16, when I saw the Ferrari, I knew this was a lie. I was like, there's no way that man. Next time you see a rich guy, go up to him and say, how'd you get rich? I've never heard anyone say university, ever. That's true. I've never heard anyone say it's a lie, it's a scam. It's when I was 16, I saw the guy in the Ferrari. I was like, I'm going to college and he isn't. And he ain't going to work. He knows something I don't know. I knew at 16, everything they tell me was a lie. But there's still people who think they have five years to waste in college. Five years. I'm 37. Let's conservative, conservatively estimate I make for myself a quarter million dollars a year, let's say. Five years ago, I was probably making 20 grand a year. That's the difference five years can make. Five years. And they're going to sit there and do what? Read a book from 22 years ago? <laughs> Go party. Oh, fraternity. It's right. yeah, it's What's really scary is this. I'm 37. I grew up on a council estate. I was broke for most of my life. I made all my money myself. And even I have disdain for the poor. Because I look at them and go, you didn't try at all. I did it. With all of the pain I went through and all the problems I had, while also fighting and becoming a kickboxing world champion, I still managed to do it. You start at a higher bracket than me. You started from a middle income at home. Your dad was, you had food. I didn't have food and I was a world champion. How did you fail so massively? And I look at them and just think of them as, you're an idiot. And if I feel that, imagine how the elites look at us. Imagine you know, it's, it's also what he's saying here. Uh, you can just rewind and think about it for a moment and how they end up uh, homeless or broke common when you broke 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 and you're working and no one give you anything you take everything by yourself you, you you will not give up it's just an instinct you will not give up because you have nobody and you need to do everything by yourself but when you live in with your family and it's taking care of you till i don't know how old you're going to be and then when you go out of that circle and you go to the real world and you go out of that circle to the real world and you start doing something by yourself and then you, you see that I couldn't have the life that I wanted. You, you expect to have the life that you had it in your home. When you go out of that circle, you expect all the same level. But when you get out, you have to understand you starting from minus zero, not even zero. You're starting from low, low, low. You're going to do all of it by yourself. And that's why people doesn't ex accept it. That why? I'm starting like this and I cannot do it and stuff like this because you you can do it if you, if you believe that you're starting from low the most lowest things and you're growing up you, you can do it but if you think that you're going to have the same level after you left your home and you're going to be oh I'm going to be fine no it's, it's impossible and that's why it's just in your mind that that's why it's like oh I cannot do it I end up and then how you end up broke that's what I believe in anyway what I and see if I feel that imagine how the elites look at Imagine you're born into a lineage, a bloodline that have been in charge of the banks forever. Imagine how you view the poor people. You think you give a shit whether they live or die? I'm talking about someone who's only been rich for 10 years. And when someone comes and complains to me about being broke, I'm like, oh, you're a dummy. You didn't even try. So imagine you were born filthy rich and your family's always been rich. 
and you're told about how uh, you don't care. You don't give an F. You don't care. Imagine how much disdain the elites truly have for the common man. And I'm talking as a common man who made a little bit of money. Then you start to understand how this world's really working. Because they don't give a shit about the common man. If you say to the elites, if you pour third worlders into this nation, you will make 3% more per year. However, the common man will have to deal with crime, rape, murder, drugs, human trafficking. He'll sit there and go, I don't care about the common man. 3%. Okay. So why would he care? Then you have a community where the only people who can protect it left are the men. The men who care about their daughters, care about their wives. But those men have to be masculine men, brave men. Well, they're under assault. We discussed that for the last two hours. So now they're afraid. All the buildings look the same anyway. Why don't we just move? Let's just move. Let's just, let's just scurry away. Then you start to lose the major cities of your nation. Just hypothetically. The major cities start to fall. Everyone starts saying stupid things like, it's a nice country if you stay away from the cities. You know what's a nice country if you stay away from all the cities? Afghanistan. I can go hide in the forest in Afghanistan with a little tent and just sit there by myself. I'd probably be fine. I probably wouldn't get drone strike. I'm on Kabul. And they don't seem to understand this. And then they hide and they run away. And eventually they're crushed. And it's over. And the whole nation falls. And the great thing about globalists being globalists is that they have the whole globe. And the, all, the, all the globalists get on a private jet with their families. Do -do -do, fly to the other place that they haven't destroyed. And they find a way to continue to profit off the burning trash heap that they just abandoned. They don't care. 3% more profit. Doesn't matter. Common man, doesn't matter. And I'm telling you that they think like this because I catch myself and I have to correct myself thinking like this. I have, there's a, a guy, I get this all the time. People come out to me and say, can you make a video for my cousin? He loves you, da, da, da. And I always refuse. I don't make videos. I might make a picture, but I don't make videos. Anyway, this particular guy showed me a picture of the person. He's like, can you make a picture of my cousin? And I looked at his cousin. He must have been about 22. And he was standing in a crowd at a festival, holding a pint in a plastic glass. And my instant thought was, this guy's a dickhead. This guy's an idiot. He's 22. I guarantee he's not a billionaire. I bet I were to sit down with him and say, how much money you got? None. Why are you there? The gap is closing. The elites hate you. You no longer have sexual consent. You're a permanent criminal in the eyes of the law. They're here to decimate you and your entire bloodline. You're 22 at the height of your capabilities, the height of your energy. You heal like Wolverine. It is Friday. You're, are you making money? What are you doing? Oh, there's this band. I really want to see this band. I guess you just deserve to lose, friend. I guess you're just an idiot. And I don't feel sorry for you. I guess you're just a dummy. And that's how I feel. So imagine how the elites feel. We're scum to these people. We are. I'm not a rich man. I'm just a poor man with loads of money. <laughs> I'm from a Luton Council. I wear diamond watches, bro. <laughs> yeah, you understand? Yeah, I do. I'm just a poor man with billions of dollars. But... It's scary when you start to understand how all these things really work. And I don't think the average man at home understands this. And if you start to understand it all, the last thing you will lack is motivation. How can you lack motivation? How can an antelope in the jaws of a tiger say, I lack motivation? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm horny, I want to jerk off. <laughs> Bro, you're a, they're, they're ripping out your throat in real time. You're bleeding out. Fight, fight back. <laughs> and then the tigers like me are like, oh, bro, well, you're going to get eaten. I'm going to eat you. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. I don't, it's kind of like, you probably have this problem as well. I don't know if you have this problem. Do you ever wake up and think, I don't need any more money, but there's fuck all else to do? Yeah, every day. Yeah, so you just end up making millions. Well, what's, what's better than making something out of nothing? Financial alchemy. Absolutely. Yeah. So I wake up and go, let me do the math. If I never worked again, I could spend $422,000 a day for the rest of my life. 
I have all the cards. I'm like, do I need more money? No. You know, let me go have a coffee. Let me, let me, go, let me try and chill out today. And within 22 minutes, I'm back on my laptop work. Because there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to do. And I can't stop myself working as a person who doesn't need money. And then there's people with no money who don't Nobody work. Yeah. I, it b blows my mind. Which is why the winners are winners and the losers are losers. Losers do a little bit of work and rest. Winners work as hard as possible and worry they're not working hard enough. It, it, it's just a separation of, of personality types. And, and, and it's almost like you can't save these people. I have something I, I sent in my email recently. I said, you could give the average man a brand new Ferrari and a road map and a coffee and a full tank of gas and tell him the destination, success. And halfway along the drive, he'll quit because it's too far. No matter how well you set it up for people, they'll quit. I have this to say with my online educational platform, my school. It's $49 a month. It's less than a Starbucks. And I will teach you how to make money online. You can escape the matrix. You can get out through the hole before it closes. You can be geographically free. You can live in Thailand. You can make money from your computer. It costs $49. You have absolutely nothing to lose. I made it cheap enough for everybody to be able to join. And people will sit there and go, Mm. Mm. and then put on Netflix. What more? I've given you a Ferrari, a full tank of gas, I've given you the latte, I've given you a road map, I've given you a hot girl to sit next to you and play songs and do selfies. I've given you everything. Just drive the car. No, oh, yeah, it's far. Mm. I don't have motivation. Do -de do <laughs> You're a loser. You are a loser. If you do not win, you lose. What do you call someone who loses? A loser. That is an underused word. Loser. My brother and I use it all the time. This person thinks this. He's a loser. What do you mean he's a loser? Look at him. He's a loser. He lost. Name a competition. I beat him at anything. Uno. Marbles. A fight to the death. You name it, I'll decimate this loser. Oh, he thinks I'm a human trafficker. Oh, he, with the loser. Give a shit. He's a loser. All these losers out here. Another thing, and then they, then they say, this is what's another thing that's amazing to me about motivation. I don't feel motivated. Newsflash. Neither do I sometimes. Yeah. You're not going to always feel like doing it. You have yeah, well, it's something normal. Psychologically, something normal. That's, uh, the motivation needs temporarily. You know how much, how much you want to be motivated, you will never be motivated because it's just temporarily. You have to understand. That's why we, most of the people say you need discipline. You need discipline to do what you have to do every day. If you want to say like I'm motivating to work tomorrow, tomorrow you, today I'm motivated. Tomorrow you're not. But if you are disciplined, you would do it anyway. That, that, that's how really motivation works. You, don't know, you cannot count on motivation because it's not really important. You have to do it anyway because it's your duty to do it because you don't want to be a fucking loser. That's the whole point. If you felt like doing it all the time, then there would be no magic to it. The magic is that you do it regardless of how you feel. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, exactly. What do you mean you need motivation? You don't, you don't need motivation. Mm -hmm. You have a duty to not be a loser anymore because the hole in the sky is closing. $49, we'll give you a ladder. Well, you know, we'll play video games. Born to lose. Born to lose. And then they'll end up voting for some ridiculous party which promises them there won't be a loser anymore. And that party will hate people like me. And they'll try and put me in jail. That's what's going to happen. That's the world we currently live in. The loser's party. Losers love company. They do. They vote for it. Losers love company. There are certain political parties and movements out there that convince you that being a loser is okay. And then you feel better. And you also get to blame others for your loserdom. And you feel great. You don't have to take any personal responsibility. I'm not a loser because of me. I'm a loser because they did it or this happened. Blah, blah, blah. That's true. So they, they're attractive to losers. Oh. And then we end up in a situation we're currently in. Who's better with women? Andrew Tate or Tristan Tate? Tristan, I'm a female. <laughs> Tristan. Why? I've retired, bro. I've retired. Tristan's a Mr. Ladies' man. Tristan, Tristan and I are the perfect team because 
or opposites. People think we're the same, but we're not. We're actually very different things. D sorry, very different. Tristan enjoys life. Tristan enjoys life. Do I enjoy life? Well, you say life is war. It is war. Mm. I don't, think I've, I, I don't think I consciously very often enjoy anything. The things I enjoy are not fun things. Are you I'm, enjoying this? This is work. It's fun. It's I mean, fun. I like to talk. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. But like, if, what would give me more satisfaction? Going to a very expensive restaurant with 10 beautiful women and popping loads of bottles of champagne and eating really great food and driving home in a fast car or clearing all my work notes. I think the notifications might give me a higher WD. I think or, you know, that's true. Tristan would love that. Tristan would enjoy the whole thing. I'd be there. And, and I'm. He'd I'm, love the 10 women you made, and you'd love the work. The work. Yeah. Yeah, so as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book, Couple Design. You can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day, new design. You see, the, the f my favorite one, I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom. This one, and my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite, and this one is also nice. Like as you, you can see the the words. Like yeah, we have bunch of design. You may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us guys. Just it's not gonna take much of you. You're gonna choose just one of them, guys. Make click on it, puff, and buy. That's that's the easy step you choose we have different color you may you choose the color and you just click we have different as you can see and different tie as your size as you see you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you and i think you have to be smart enough to realize most things in the world are garbage but stupid enough to enjoy the garbage so i can i can put myself in a frame of mind where i'll sit at that table and i won't enjoy it but i'll sit and say Every, like, like me stealing everyone's dreams with the cars. I'm like, this is every man's aspiration. Everyone else at this club wishes they were at this table with the most beautiful women, with the nicest cars outside, and the, the biggest steak and balls of champagne, whatever. I'll sit there and I'm cognitive enough to look and say, yes, this is fun. But really, it's just because no one else can do it. Am I actually enjoying it? No. I'd rather just go home and work and not really care. But it has to be done just to make other people sad. My brother, and I, and I, my, my brother and I used to talk about this. It was actually, we used to say this a few years ago. Back when I used to drink, I don't drink anymore. But he'd say, are we going to the club tonight? I was like, I don't want to go. He goes, but Andrew, if we don't go, other men get girls at their tables. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we go, we get every single female in the club at our table. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to go. And I don't want females near me, really. But do I want to give them to everyone else? No. All right. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just petty. Maybe I'm spiteful. Yeah. But we'd go just so no one else could have any fun. But Tristan enjoys life, so... And, and that's what I love about him, because if I want to enjoy life, I can tap into his energy, and he can tap into my energy, and things need doing. And that's like why going we're, to prison. Like going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's why we're a very good team. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm cerebral enough to pretend to enjoy things. But if I'm actually honest, there's very little I actually enjoy. I enjoy fighting. I enjoy working. I enjoy driving fast cars competitively, like racing and stuff. Besides that, mm. I don't care. It's one of the best things about having the watches, the cars, and the fantasy life is understanding the reality that that is not the fantasy life. I think the best thing about it, being honest, is that no one else can have it. I, I'll be honest, mm. I, I'm telling you what I enjoy. Mm. I enjoy having things other people can't have. I enjoy using finance to assert my dominance. I enjoy peacocking with my feathers. Mm. Ha ha ha. I enjoy. Is that one of the more honest Andrew moments? I'll be very honest. It's the, lam la the lamentation of, lo of losers is beautiful to me. I love it. I love people complaining about the energy bill. And I'm filling up my SF9 and going, yeah, it must be really hard. Oh, 200 pounds. Yeah, so. I, I, it's asserting dominance. I'm better than you. Look, I have metrics, measurable metrics, numbers, nice and simple. You understand numbers. Is two more than one? Okay, cool. Right. Billion? I'm not going to. 
<laughs> you tried your best. I love that. I think every man does. I think that male happiness comes through the feeling of superiority. I think men are happy when they feel better. I think we're naturally competitive. That's why we've always done what we've done. Why did Genghis Khan need Vienna? Bro, that's Austria. Look at a map. Why did he need Vienna? It took him probably three months to even hear they were at Vienna. By the time he got the message, they probably already conquered it. Why did he need it? Because he won. Why do I need the stuff I have? Because other people can't have it as much. And I think that that's where masculine happiness comes from. Because I think men are happy when they feel respected. And you're going to respect yourself if you look around and you have things other people don't have. It's very easy. I, I don't want to be called arrogant. Wait, sorry. I don't give a shit if I'm called arrogant. Because sure, there's people who say, he thinks he's so great. And I can sit and say, yeah, you're right. I think I'm so great. And I know that angers you. But let's actually measure. And I'll prove to you that I am great. I, I, I'm not trying to insult anyone. I'm not trying to be unlikable. I'm saying, I am great. Look, get the average man and the average statistics, and put my statistics next to them, put it in chat GPT, and say, which one's greater? What do, you, what do you want? I enjoy that feeling. Why do I walk into the showroom and buy the two available cars that I don't want? Because it's one man's dream, and now another man can't buy them. Now they're mine. But that's just it. And I think that if every man's honest with himself, that's what every man wants. If you get away with all the Matrix garbage and all the Matrix has told you all this crap, like be humble and all this other garbage, throw it away. Why do you play sports? To win. To win. Why do you want to put a ball in a net more times than the other people? To show that you're better than them at putting a ball in a net. How insignificant an action. A ball in a net. Who cares? A much more significant action would be making a bunch of money, or being physically stronger, or a better fighter, or being smarter, a quicker talker, or being more well-known, more respected, more influential. That's far more important than putting a ball in the net. And you'll spend your time putting a ball in the net to prove you're better than other people. So don't sit and say that I'm a bad person for proving I'm better than everyone else by all the things I'm doing. That's masculine competition. By extension, the men who do not think like me, the losers, because you lose. If there's a game being played and some men realize it's a battle and some men don't realize there's a battle going on, how can they possibly win? So some of you men are waking up every day not realizing you're in a forever permanent competition with every single man around you for everything, all of the time. And that doesn't ever cross your mind and you wonder why you permanently lose. Well, it crosses my mind and that's why I'm beating you. Women want the men who think this way. Women want the men who understand this, who win. That's who women want. So you can call it arrogant. You can call it egotistical. I call it winning. I call it realism. I call it realistic. And the best things about having most of the things I have is that other people can't have them. That's the bottom line of it. It's the reason why billionaires buy a bigger yacht than the billionaire next to them. They do not need an extra 20 foot feet of deck space. <laughs> They want the biggest yacht in the harbor. It's the reason why they buy one of one Picassos. It's the reason why when Bugatti launch a new car with 80 units, they're all sold same day. That's why. Because winners all think the same way. And anyone who sits and goes, well, you should be more humble. I hear that sometimes. And then I look at who said it to me. And whenever someone tells me their opinion, this is a habit I give everyone at home. Whenever somebody gives you their opinion on anything, listen to the opinion and then stop and look at who told it to you. Because you never want to adopt the thinking of somebody who you don't want to be. Because That's their true. thinking made them. That's true. So whatever they believe in their mind is why they are the person they are. So if somebody sits and says to you, you should be more humble. I sit and think, okay, my logical, this is how my brain works. He believes I should be more humble. That's how his mind operates. The closer my mind operates to his mind, the more likely I am to be like him. Who is he? Wait. And I'll look at the person who said that to me and say, no, thank you. No, sir, I refuse. It, it, being humble, is that how you got to where you are? Is that how you got? No, you, you keep humble. I'll keep winning. You can get. Because most people who talk about humble, all they really want is to not be reminded of how they have failed. They don't want me to make it clear to them that they have failed. They have failed. And 
I even think we're talking about like the normal man and the normal wife, and we'll talk about that in a second. But normalcy now is being psyoped from all angles. I feel like in the 1950s, a normal man was a winner. The normal man went to a normal job and had a normal family in a normal house and a normal car and a normal life. But I feel like the normal person now is two, fam two parents working, children being raised by the matrix in school, being bombarded with propaganda, bills barely paid, depressed, angry, anxious, watching the BBC. I feel like normalcy has been changed from being a winner to being a loser. So now being normal is just losing in a way which is so familiar to the people around you are losing that you don't realize you've lost at all because everyone's losing. So you're like, oh, I'm just normal. No, no, you've all lost. You've all lost. None of you are free. You've all lost. And that's even more scary. You can't even be normal anymore. To be a winner, you have to be exceptional. You could be a winner as a normal person only 50, 60 years ago. Now the normal people can't even win because they, they're, they're grinding down. So I'm going to take this couple minutes, guys, to speak about my store. So I'm going to drop the video what we have in store and make sure to, to buy something from that as a support. And I will tell you why it's better to buy from the store. Yeah, so as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book, Couple Design, you can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day a new design. You see the, the f my favorite one. I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom. This one, and my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite, and this one is also nice. Like as you, you can see the the words. Like yeah, we have bunch of design. You may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us guys. Just. It's not gonna take much of you you're gonna choose just one of them guys make click on it puff and buy that's that's the easy step you choose we have different color you may you choose the color and you just click we have different as you can see and different tie as your size as you see you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you and let's go to the or because i'm doing design and i'm not doing some words like uh, familiar words with uh, only the subscribers so i'm doing design every day so try make sure to check it every day may one day you're going to find something you really like because i'm dropping every day and as a support for us to do more reaction and to do more suggestion of you guys make sure to change uh, send me the links with the super thanks and how much high your number is how much i'm going to do your fast your react uh, your suggestion Oh, check the video and we go back. Society, that the bracket of normal is going further and further down. And then you can, by extension, that makes it more scary, right? Because in the 1950s, I guess you could wake up and say, I just want to be a normal, law-abiding citizen. I want to be normal and I want to follow the law. And you'll have a good life and you'll be a winner. You'll be respected at home. Your wife will love you. You'll raise children. You'll be religious. You'll worship God. You'll pay your bills. Normal law-abiding. If you're a normal law-abiding person, not on, nowadays, not only are you broke, you can't talk because it's hate speech. Like, if you follow the laws now and you're just a normal law-abiding person, not only are you broke, you're matrix-minded. Listen to the BBC. Yeah, I guess we need to go bomb the Houthis. Bro, who? Two weeks, we're now we're bombing the Houthis in Yemen. Cool. Two weeks ago, if you were to go around, the work round England and ask people who were the Houthis. 99.9% .9 of people couldn't even tell you who they were. Yeah, that's true. They don't Nobody even knew who they were. Now we're convinced we need to blow them up. <laughs> they don't even know who these people are. News told them. Normal. Well, I guess if the MPs believe, I guess it's normal I'm in debt. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So, and it's normal people telling me to be humble. So this is, this is why it doesn't enter my, my mind when they're like, you need to be more humble. I'm like, okay, well, you're a normal person. Here's your life. Here's what you do. That's fine. I don't believe in that. And then I look at my life. Yeah, and that's, uh, and, the, yeah, and that's guy what I've been saying in all my videos. Someone, if someone criticizes you, it doesn't mean you are what he's saying. It means that it's just a reflection of him. He, he see himself what he is writing you in the comments. So whatever he say, it's about him. And if he, 
if he cannot do the thing that you're doing, even, you know, it's been the smallest things. For example, I don't know, you go try to fix your car by yourself, you know, and you put a video and you try to fix your car by yourself. And then he starts telling you like, oh, fucking you dumbass, you know nothing about the car. Why you should just uh, stick with the uh, books and nerd things. And you're trying to do something new. It's just this is how he sees himself. He, he also doesn't know anything about the car. He knows nothing about this. They just like to talk. It's a reflection to themselves. And it makes them feel really good when they speak uh, ab about themselves to other people. They feel really good. Okay, this guy is like this. But it's, it's, the truth behind it is he is like this. You're not like that. So don't, give in, don't care about what people say about you. Because in the end of the day... What you think about yourself is the most important. So your opinion about yourself and how you see yourself, that's the most important thing. If you don't see yourself, how he said, then why you bother yourself just being upset for one minute? I, I want to make a point here that's clear, though. I don't want men to then become delusional. Don't think you're great when you're not. Don't be delusional. Everything I've talked about here is metrics, measurable metrics, numbers. As a man, you need to live in the real world or you're not going to be competitive because you're competing in the real world. Try your best. So you need to be able to do amazing things and then be proud of yourself. Don't sit and think you're great for no reason. That is arrogance. That's true. I'd argue that the normal person who thinks they're so unique and great for no reason is more arrogant than me. I was the most famous man in the world. I'm allowed to say that. It was measured. It's numbers. It's Google. So... I think the best mental model as a man is to understand that you cannot be normal. You need to be exceptional. You need to do exceptional things. That ties into the exceptionally good and the exceptionally bad, like we talked earlier, which means you need to be hard on yourself so you can deal with the exceptionally bad. And if you start to do all these things, they all compound. Everything I've said across all these hours all tie into each other, and you end up in one result. You end up in one place, which is brutal competence, brutal masculine competence. There's nowhere else to be. And through that brutal masculine competence, you can also protect yourself from all the things we were talking about earlier from the Matrix. Brutal masculine competence will put you in a position of respect where your girlfriend you haven't seen in seven years, your ex, is called, and she goes, I respect him too much to rat on him. Maybe he loves someone else now, but I just won't rat on him. I respect him. Only brutal masculine competence can save you. Law won't save you. Law's against you. Nothing will save you besides your own brutal competence. Does money make you happy? Or happier? I wouldn't be happy if I was broke. Mon true. Money, okay, so to, to not root, I answered about how having things that other people can't have makes me happy. So it makes me happy for that reason. Because one. it's the vehicle to it. Because it's the vehicle yeah. to it. So that's one answer, but I'll give another answer. Money to me now is like hands. Hear me out. I use it all the time. And I'm glad I have it. I don't consciously think I'm super glad I have hands, right? Maybe occasionally, if I see somebody without hands, I'm like, thank God I have hands. But most of the time, you just expect it to be there because you use your hands, right? You expect it to be there. You take it for granted. If I lost my hands, I would be like devastated. I don't appreciate them as much as I should. I should appreciate them more because I could lose them at any point. And that's exactly how I view money. Because if I want something, I just take it. The world for me is free. I try to explain this to people and they don't understand. I'm like, when you're as rich as me, the only way it feels is that everything is free. If I see something and I want it, I just say, yeah, I'll take that. It's free. It's like, it's like imagine there's no more prices on things. The only reason I don't take something is because I don't want it or I don't want to deal with putting up with it or putting it somewhere because I already have so much stuff. But everything is free all the time. I go into a clothing store, I go into Louis Vuitton. Yeah, give me this, 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 give me this. Bro, I'll go into Louis Vuitton and there's a tracksuit and I can't be bothered to try it on. I'll buy all four sizes and I'll work out later if Sean fits and I'll show you later. Everything's free. I, mean, I don't want to take my jacket off, put it on, pet it. So that's, that's how it feels. Now, if I had to go back to being broke, I would be like, you didn't appreciate being rich nearly enough. But I'm in the NBA, so that can't happen to me. But that's how money feels. Does money make me happy? Happy. Okay. The, the way how you Do use my it. hands make me happy? Well, no. I don't wake up and go, I'm happy I have hands. No. But if I didn't have hands, I'd probably be a lot less happy. Yeah, the way you use it's it. It's a requirement for happiness that I just expect to be there. <clears throat> What's interesting is, 
We talk about how I expect to just have money. Beautiful women expect men to just have money, even more. There's a beautiful girl I knew some years ago, blah, blah, blah. I was talking to her, and she was saying, money won't get a girl. A girl doesn't want a man for money unless, he's, unless she's a prostitute and it's like a purely transactional relationship. She said, money will qualify you to try. Every man I talk to has money. I'm, I'm beautiful. I, I would never speak to a man who has no money. In my world, all men just have money. I don't know how. Of course you have money. You're a man. That's how they view money. Beautiful girls think men just have money. Like, like men just have hands and legs and money. They don't care how you made it. They don't care how hard it was to make. They don't care how much stress you go through to get it. In her world, every single man she has ever replied to on Instagram ever was rich. So men just have money. And the men who don't have money don't even exist. Don't exist to her. We're sitting in a restaurant. And when we left, I said, how many men were in that restaurant? She goes, hmm, four or five. It's like, no. There was 20 waiters you didn't see. There's the kitchen staff at the back you didn't see. There's a security guard and the valet out front. They're invisible to you. They don't even cross your mind. You just see the diamond watches. That's how they view the world. So you're talking about, does money make me happy? Well, yeah, I think it's a bare minimum requirement of existence. I expect to have it like I expect to have my hands. By extension, beautiful women expect you to just have money. If I sat with a beautiful girl and said, oh, yeah, I can't afford that, she'd be like, what? You're a man. What do you mean you can't afford it? Like, like, you're, like, like you're missing a dick or something. It's just, it's just the world we live in. It's the world we live in. Like you're missing a dick, like you have more than one. Well, <laughs> if, it, if it's big enough, it can count for two. But... But, but yeah, so I couldn't be happy broke, and I know I'm always going to have money, and I expect to have money all of the time. But it's like my hands. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. It's like my hands. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't be happy without money. I, I don't know how a man is waking up and he's happy without money. Well, I think I've written books on money, done a lot of exploration. I actually think the rhetoric that money doesn't make you happy and life isn't all about money is part of the propaganda of what you call the matrix in indoctrinating us to concede and, and just enough so that we can pay our 50% taxes and pay our interest on all of our loans and then when we die pay 40% of everything yep. that we own because yep. if we know that money makes us really happy we'll go and find it which means becoming an entrepreneur and getting out of the system and then that is freedom. Oh absolutely. So. I think the smartest thing the rich people ever did was convince the broke people that money doesn't make you happy. I think that's nail, nail on the head. All the rich people are like, don't worry guys, don't worry. Money doesn't make you happy guys. I'm gonna keep mine, but don't worry, it doesn't make you happy, I promise, I promise. I'm sad, I promise. You're sad, yeah, we're both are. Good luck. <laughs> Biggest scam alive, because money is freedom. It's freedom to drive what you want, eat where you want, go where you want. It's freedom to sleep with who you want. I just described it. If you want a beautiful woman, you need money. Like, to, 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 money is freedom. If you, if you don't want to be a slave, which is... It's freedom to say no. It's money is freedom to say no. It's freedom to talk the truth online and be put in jail and come out and still have supercars. There's a lot of men who think what I think. They can't say it. They lose their jobs. So you want to say money doesn't buy happiness. Well, then you're saying you're happy to be a slave because only money is going to give you freedom. When they want to try and attack you, they've attacked me, they take your money away on purpose. So absolutely, money's freedom to have an opinion now. So it's true. So you're, you're yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so money absolutely is happiness because freedom is a bare minimum requisite to happiness. Unless you're happy being a slave. And you're right about what rich people did. They tried to convince all the people at the bottom that money isn't the answer. You're never going to be more happy poor. You may, as well, you may as well be rich. I can't think of many scenarios where being rich was a detriment over being poor. There's not many. Even if money can't help you, you may as well have it, right? So I completely agree with you. I think money is a bare minimum requirement for happiness, especially if you're a masculine man who wants to outcompete. Then you need money, because money is basically everything. I think money is the most important thing in the world is health, because you have nothing if you're dying. Second thing is, is family and friends who you love. And the third is money, because it's everything else. It's literally everything else is money. And they've convinced people, the poor people, oh yeah, he has money, but you know, I have friends and family who love me. So do I. So do I. 
That, it's like, because I have money, I don't have friends and family? Where did... I get to spend more time with my friends and family than you do because you're working a slave job. <laughs> they, 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 people are psyoped into thinking that rich people are somehow lacking somewhere else. And I'm sure some of them are, but not all of them. There are some people that have everything. They're just going to have to accept it. Mm -hmm. Some people just have it all. They have friends and family and good relationships and, kids. and love their kids and a bunch of money. And, the money and, and if that doesn't anger you to get up and make a bunch of money, well, I don't know what will. You know, I always found the one thing that was always amazing to me, and this happened to me even just the other day. I'll be driving one of my 59 supercars. And, uh, I don't want to brag. <laughs> driving. And it's raining, and it's dark, and it's cold. And I see people at a bus stop. And I'm at the traffic light, and I'm like, it's freezing, and it's raining and it's nighttime, and you can't afford an Uber. If that won't motivate you, I don't know what will. Because the worst thing about the bus isn't the bus, it's the time you wait for the bus. Time is money. You're gonna sit down there for 45 minutes in the freezing cold and waste your time to save a couple dollars on an Uber, and you don't feel panic to get rich, and you're just fine with that, you're gonna come home. Took the bus today, bro. Born to lose. Born to lose. If that won't motivate you, especially as my 5.2 liter V10 Lamborghini is humming right next to you, standing there, and you're standing there with your coat on, your hood up. Lamborghini's right there. I don't know when the bus will come. It's been a while today, bro. Bro. Born to lose. So how do you get rich then? Because whilst I agree with you, some people just don't yet know what to do. Well, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is, I will teach everyone what to do inside of my school. And I'm gonna have to plug this school because it's very important, and I'll tell you why. Plug the f out. I'm gonna plug it and I'll tell you why. The reason I launched my academy is not for me to make money. I was already rich. My academy exists for the reason we just discussed. If you wanna be free of mind, you need to have money. Therefore, if my goal is to attack and defeat the Matrix, I need people who have money who can tell the truth. If you're a fan of mine and you work a brokey job, you're no use to me because you can't speak because you'll lose your job and you cannot feed your family. If you're a fan of mine and you're making millions of dollars, then you can tell the truth and you can back me up and support me and you can echo and you can amplify my sentiments. Therefore, I want all of my fans to make as much money as possible. I'm not a philanthropist. I'm not doing this because I care about all the people. But I'm genuinely, from a selfish point of view, trying to make all of my fans as rich as possible so we can all tell the truth. That is why my academy is so cheap, so anyone can join it. And it will teach you how to make money online. So if you've sat here for hours and listened to everything I've said and agreed with all of it and still have not joined the academy, then there's something wrong with you in your mind. Because you obviously respect my point of view and you obviously know I know what I'm talking about. And now I'm telling you I'll teach you how to get rich and you still don't join, then you're a broken person and I can't help you. Or maybe they don't know the link. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> join the real world. You can type in the real world on Google and you'll see the link. Or go to cobratate.com. Hate you, it's there and you can join. That's how I teach people to make money online. But to give a more overall answer, outside of the plug to the academy, which I'll once again reiterate, if you're not inside of, I don't know what's wrong with you. I think the easiest way to make money in the world today is to sell information. I That's true. Selling information, if you were to tell me what's the quickest way to get rich, I think providing information, or because we live in an attention economy, finding a way to it's really hard to believe that the, the quickest way to get rich. Uh, that's why I don't believe anything in YouTube because they say the quickest way to get rich, this is, and this is, and basically all of them are selling you something, basically. But you have to understand at the same time, all these people who are selling you something, you have, there is a 30 seconds what they're saying it must be true. You know, so you see that the guy doing a video for one hour or something like this, and, and it's just 30 seconds you, where, where you can get your like the real plan and all of the other i don't know how many hours how many minutes there is like just garbage it's like just to sell you something but 
that's why it's hard for me to believe the internet in general or the youtube in general especially because everybody's like oh, i can teach you how to get rich quicker but I, for someone telling me i can re teach you how to get how to be a, a football player quicker that's impossible come on that's garbage there is nothing quick you have to understand nothing okay there <laughs> there is nothing quick guys you cannot achieve anything quickly that's how uh, things things are hard difficult and in the, eventually you're going to get reward for it but quick no. attention and then selling information is probably one of the easiest ways to make money in the world today i'd like to argue that everybody knows something so i i, I like to challenge myself so give me a normie job give me a normal job name a normie job making coffee making coffee boom you're a barista you're a barista. Now, I'm going to tell you how to get rich as a barista because I can think that fast off the top of my head. The problem with most people in the world today is not that they do a normal thing, it's that they do a normal thing and they don't try to be the best at it. So you can be a barista and you can just make coffees or you can be a barista that makes the fancy coffees and can turn over all the cups and do like the, the tricks and yeah. all the garbage. <laughs> we have a man who became a billionaire from salt. Yes. From salt. <laughs> you can all put salt on. He did it the best. Bam. So the first thing you need to do is get very good at making coffees. Yeah. That's the first thing you need to do. So be able to do it in a fancy way. Then you need to solicit attention. Well, you can make coffees in a fancy way, and you can hire a videographer. You can then begin to make fancy coffees in a fancy way, and you can make it look good with a finalized product, and you can get a nice video made that's well cut with some fancy music. You can begin to put them on Instagram and solicit people to watch your Instagram page. Now you have attention. How do you then turn that attention into money after you began to show your fancy coffees? Well, you could, let's say, put together a course or an academy or write a book on the magic of coffee or the secrets of coffee and you would put a mystery on it don't say i'll teach you how to make coffee no say the secrets of coffee and you'd have a link in your instagram page and it would be nine dollars and it would tell people the secrets how to make coffee for example you'd start to sell that for nine dollars you'd make a couple hundred or a couple thousand not too much but you continue to make fancy coffees people continue to go to your instagram page you're now selling the secrets of how to make coffee then after people start knowing you as being a barista you start to make these nine dollars you have twenty thirty thousand dollars in the bank what you can do is launch your own coffee brand. You can go on Alibaba.com, you can find some coffee beans, you can put your face on it because your face is now a recognized brand. You can get your own coffee beans, you can begin to sell them on Instagram. Before you know it, you're making 10 or $15,000 a month. You can start to do tours. You can start to put posters on your Instagram or in your Instagram stories saying, I'm gonna do master classes on how to make coffee, 20 people only, $1,000 each, at this premium barista speciality coffee shop in London. The coffee shop will allow you to do it for free because they want people to know Get the advertising from you and your brand. You'll charge a thousand dollars each. That's twenty grand for a day to teach people how to pour milk in a fucking cup. Boom! You've got a coffee brand. You've got an online school. You're doing seminars. You were a nobody. You worked in Starbucks. You were a loser. You put in a little bit of effort. Now you drive a Ferrari. Done. By extension, anyone who does not drive a Ferrari is a lazy idiot. It is that easy to get rich in the world today if you actually try. Nobody tries. Instead, he'll go to work every day make the coffees, go home, off. Some people are so lazy that they will work every day instead of get rich. And they think because they're working every day that they're not lazy. I'll argue you're exceptionally lazy because you're so lazy that instead of trying and thinking outside of the box, you now have to enslave yourself for eternity. That's how lazy you are. Nothing lazier than a man with a nine to five because he ain't trying. The hole in the ceiling is closing. This won't work forever. This will work. <laughs> Everything I just told you about that could work for an electrician. Do the same thing. Teach people how to wire a plug. Who gives it? You'll make some money if you try. My online school teaches 18 modern wealth creation methods. Everything I just told you there is not actually inside of the school. We have 18 other modern wealth creation methods. When you yeah. join, there's a quiz and it says, do you have money to invest? Most people say no. We have do nothing. you have time? You either have money or time. You have one of the two. Yeah. Exactly. We'll turn your time into money or we'll turn your money into money. And you can join. $49 a month will teach you absolutely everything. Yep. We have hundreds of thousands of students. And then they keep asking you questions. And they're just destined to lose. So you ask, how can people make money? Well, let's go deeper down the rabbit hole. Let's imagine every barista who watches this now tries my idea. The winner is going to be one, the person who makes the most beautiful coffee, the person who makes the most beautiful videos, the person who works the longest, who tries the hardest, the most videos, who makes his $9 Secrets of Coffee book that he sells on Amazon the best book, who gives the most value in his masterclass, who gets the best coffee beans for his coffee brand, 
but then it comes down to hard work. People say work smart, not hard. Disagree. Work smart and hard, because lots of people are working smart. If you have five people working smart and the one who works hardest, he's going to win. I work smart and hard. Work, work hard on the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah, so as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book, Couple Design, you can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day new design. You see the, the f my favorite one. I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom. This one, and my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite, and this one is also nice. Like as you you can see the the words like, yeah, we have a bunch of design. You may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us guys. Just. It's not gonna take much of you you're gonna choose just one of them guys make click on it puff and buy that's that's the easy step you choose we have different color you may you choose the color and you just click we have different as you can see and different tie as your size as you see you just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys thank you and let's go to the video so there's no avoiding the hard work i don't think this is an interview uh, I don't think this is another. It could be another emergency, like it's another emergency meeting. Speaking, the guy is not asking any question. He just, uh, yeah, he asks a question and he let him talk, and that's the good things about it. When, when you know, especially when you know someone is like someone is a little bit outsmarting you, and he knows something that you don't know, it's better to shut up and just to listen. That's what we work. do. We just this listen. idea that you can work smart and not hard. I, I don't. I don't buy that. I believe you're going to have to work hard. But you have to work on the right thing and work smart first. If you don't work smart, you're not on the. You're not on the starting line. So working smart puts you on the starting line. Then you got to work hard to work, mm. to, to win the race. Because there's a lot of broke people working really hard, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. they're, they're not working smart. No. You need both. Mm. So then, for all the baristas who have watched this, who've decided to take that idea, which I've given you for free, you're welcome. The one of you that works hardest is going to be the one that makes the money. And then perhaps if you make a bunch of money, you can join the war room and you can come and speak to one of us in person. And I'll say, how did you get rich? And say, I watched your interview with Rob Moore and I stopped working in Starbucks and da 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 I'll say, you're welcome, you owe me a coffee. <laughs> Ferrari, please. <laughs> Are you gonna launch your own crypto? No, I'm never gonna launch a crypto. I just like to f with crypto. I, I know, I know what he's gonna answer because he hate on crypto in general. I follow him and he hate crypto in general. He doesn't like, he doesn't believe in the idea. Even though he made money from it, he doesn't believe in the idea of it, a blanching. Because he can, you have to understand, a lot of people, uh, like he have, a, his face is already, it's a, it's a brand. So he can just to say like, oh, buy this guy, this uh, cryptocurrency and you're going to see how this um, currency going to flourish. Because he's already famous, he, he's a brand. So, And I believe a lot of people contact him for this shit. Crypto Twitter. Oh, well, crypto I like Twitter crypto. Are full of the biggest degenerate losers on the planet. I do like They're crypto. losers. Crypto is the only scenario I can think of where you can make a whole bunch of money. I will defend myself that I crypto is really nice if you understand how it works. And when you don't understand how it works, like me, I don't understand it how it works fully. I'm learning a little bit, not all the time. I'm learning a little bit, but I'm not doing it full time. My cousin, like my cousin, do it full time, and he explained to me what to do, what to buy, and what to not buy, which. Where, where should I put my money and where should I not put my money? So he explained to me, I'm not really good at it at all. But I, I do like it because it, it I'm just leave it like that. It helped to make a little bit money. While benefiting society is zero. Even if you yeah. do something bad in a normal company. Because crypto, for I, to be able to win, someone else need to lose. And I think, I think that he doesn't believe in this idea. But I think he believes in this idea in the real world outside of this. To be able to win, you need someone else need to lose. But in his mind, like it's happening, but it's like it's gonna be beneficial. You're gonna put money, but in the same time you're gonna earn money from the information that I'm getting, I'm giving you. That's why it's beneficial. If you, when you where you put money is beneficial. In crypto, it's not beneficial. Someone lose, someone win. Someone knows that some the something that you don't know, and that's how he's gonna win, and that's how you're gonna lose. I believe in that. So that's why he hate it. You get blood diamond. That's bad, but you do something good. You know, you, you manage to make a woman happy with an engagement ring. 
you manage to make a security contractor happy by paying him a bunch of money to point the AKs at the children. You do something good for someone. Crypto is unique, where somebody can take $100 and make a million dollars and benefit society 0%. They never help anyone at any point. Exactly, no beneficial. And they never learn any lessons along the way. If you make money the way you've made money or I've made money, you learn how to speak, you learn how to deal with stress, you learn how to manage people, you learn banking, you learn taxes, you learn things. If you make a bunch of money on a crypto pump, you have learned nothing. You've learned nothing and benefited nobody. It is the lazy person's dream to buy a shit coin, it blow up, then be rich with no work, no net benefit to the universe. And because the world is cyclical, because there is no light without dark, because God is just, these people always end up going broke because they never learn any skills. If I lost everything today, I know how to make it all back better and faster than before because of the lessons I learned making it the first time. Yeah. These people know nothing. All they know is to gamble. So they gamble again, lose more. Borrow money, gamble again, lose more. Crypto Twitter is full of degenerate losers, and I love to play games with them because they would love to make a bunch of coin because they make a bunch of money. Mm. But the problem is some people would make a bunch of money and a bunch of others would lose money. There's no such thing as free money. Yeah, yeah. For everyone who wins, someone else must lose. Yeah, yeah. If you buy a coin for a dollar and sell it for $10, someone bought it at $10. If it then goes down, the person who bought it at $10 loses money. I do not want any of my fans to ever lose money in my name. Yeah, that's why he doesn't I don't need believe money, in So I refuse yeah, to sell out my fans for money. Obviously. I am not Logan Paul. I will not do that. So for that reason, I will never launch a crypto. Sometimes I say I'm going to launch a crypto and I watch crypto's Twitter go into a degenerate jerk off and have a mental breakdown about how much money they can scam. He did this one time on Twitter. He, yeah. These are lazy, idiot it. people. And they hide behind their little <laughs> cartoon display pictures and they just want to just scam money. They don't want to do any real work. Yeah. I just like to prod them because, you know, it's funny. Yeah, but the, that's the sad things about it because really people like they don't give a fuck about nobody and they're not beneficial, especially who, who people who launch uh, meme coins, you know, people who launch meme coins. If you're familiar with the meme coins, people who launch it, it's like they don't give an, they don't care about you. They're ready to scam you. They do it for one. Not all of them, but most of them, you know, most of them, like they do it, like uh, make you believe that they work in a little bit, one week, two weeks, three weeks, you work and you work and we lunch in it, we lunch in it and then boom, everything is gone. You know, so that's why uh, it's also, I talk to my cousin, I told him like, bro, you, like what you're telling me now, it's gambling. Even though he's studying and he know which currency, which meme coin or some shit like that gonna be pumped and when, which one gonna go down. He doesn't know, but basically, he can read it. So that's how we understand it. That's why I, well, I put the, a little bit. But I, I would like to say that I stop it. I'm not, I'm not putting anything in crypto, but my cousin still uh, contacting me, like, we do this and do this and do this. But it's been a long time I didn't do it because, uh, as I said, like, uh, well, we all like fast money, but it's most of it lose. The crypto is not an easy place to win. And I, uh, I, to be honest with you, when I was knowing nothing, I lost a lot, a lot. I lost. But you can admit also it's like gambling and that it's also it's a little bit playing with my morals, a little bit Islamic things. It's, you know, it's haram to play with this, especially gamble. If you can read, it's good. But if you just put it because it tell you it's gambling, I'm gambling. So I stopped it. Right. None of them have my life, none of them have my money. But if it's sure, I'm putting it. I don't okay. care. And uh, the great thing about it is, imagine one of these crypto losers became a billionaire. Say he bought coin, everything went well, he became a billionaire. Great. We have the same shit coin means cool. a meme coin. I can still rip his throat out. And he's still a dork. And he still can't speak like I can speak. And he still can't go through the, the things I've been through. And he still can't get women the way I can. He still can't be respected when he walks down the street the way I am. He's still a nobody. Money won't save you. Money amplifies. If you're a nerd and you get rich, you become a mega nerd. If you're a G and you become rich, you become top G. A car is the simplest proof. If you see a tech dork pull up with a Lambo and gets out, it's his favorite dork, you're like, oh, super nerd. The Lambo makes him a bigger nerd. <laughs> you see me get out at three in the morning, you're scared. You think I'm a drug dealer or a mob boss. It amplifies. Money will not change who you are, it will amplify who you are. Which means these crypto losers, the you worst are, thing that can happen to them is that they actually get rich because then they become mega losers. You, you, you need the struggle to become a man. 
Only the pain will give you wisdom. You only want a crypto pump because you're scared of pain and you're scared of trouble and struggle. That's why you want a crypto pump in the first place. So when I talk about crypto. Yeah, I like, I like when he speak about this kind of conversation because it's really triggering to me and uh, I would like to, you know, to speak about them. What do you think about the crypto in general? What do you think about what he's saying, about everything he said in this kind of, in this one hour, 15 minutes, what he said? Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know, I, I agree part of with the crypto what he says uh, because nobody's beneficial. You don't beneficial. If you, to be able to win, someone else needs to lose and you benefit in nobody. And basically, you're gambling. That's what I believe. But in the same way, it's a little bit because, you know, to earn money, you need to have, you need to put money in the crypto. You need to have it from an, a place somewhere else. So you need to do all the shit things you do and then pump it up. And you keep doing this for one year, two years. You never know which one. How you're gonna win? What you're gonna and you study in the same time. So I disagree in this one, like saying like. But most of it is true what he said anyway. So guys, we're gonna stop here as a part one. We're gonna do the second part uh, later on. We have other reaction coming. Uh, I'm gonna drop the video what he where he did uh, the Romanian uh, interview in television, but it wasn't really interesting to me. Uh, so I stopped it in maybe 20 minutes or something. I'm gonna drop it anyway, but I'm not gonna finish it was really not interesting to me this one is much better uh what else uh make sure to check the store guys as i said before i will give you why it's better to check the uh, buy something from uh, my store because i'm putting design with new words i'm trying to be creative each time and you will not find this somewhere else especially the words that i'm putting you're not going to find them somewhere else uh the design also so i'm not putting you words like only subscriber know, for example, my famous words I say like "go smooth" or "welcome Habibi." So I'm not, I'm I'm not putting it in a T-shirt because it doesn't make sense to me. So I would I would like to give you something nice as a design, as a word. Like it could be a funny joke or something like. You may check it. I'm gonna leave you the video right here. So check it. Yeah. So as I said before, this is the design I made today. My book couple design. You can see it in blue and pink for women and men. We have this one as a new one. Yeah, like I said, every day a new design. You see the, the f my favorite one. I like this one too. It's 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 poetry here. Uh, I like freedom. This one, and my favorite is the fox, the dream catcher. This one is my favorite, and this one is also nice. Like as you you can see the the words like. Yeah, we have a bunch of design. You may like it. So make sure to check the store to purchase something from here as a support for us guys. Just. It's not going to take much of you. You're going to choose just one of them. Guys, make click on it. Puff. And buy. That's that's the easy step. You choose. We have different color. You may you choose the color and you just click. We have different as you can see. And different tie as your size as you see. You just click add it to cart and buy it and support us for making more reaction guys. Thank you. And and uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you if you want to have a uh, another reaction of this kind of things if you have a suggestion or your video funny serious one a movie a trailer it's not important just send me i'm doing it anyway and if you want to have it faster make sure to send it with a super thing as much as high you want higher you want with the money i'm saying with them what i'm saying well how much higher you went with the money and the the the, the super thing you send it with and the suggestion of the link i'm going to put it as as that because i'm scheduling a lot of videos and that's how that's why i don't do everyday videos i'm scheduling them and when is videos coming so i put it anyway i'm explaining to you how i do it's for free i'm explaining to you and i believe everybody doing it so yeah make sure to check the store guys and buy something and send the super thanks see you for our second part